With the total height of the new launch tower passing the halfway mark, this week was all about construction at Starbase. At the build site, work continues on SpaceX's first Block 2 Starship, Super Heavy Boosters 12 and 15 gets a little taller, and glass installation begins on the new office building. Now let's dig into this week's update. Picking up where we left off last week, as the clock ticked over to midnight on Friday morning, the fifth module of the new tower headed down Highway 4 to the launch site. Once there, the prefabricated section of the Integration Tower 2 was parked just inside the gate to await installation. Meanwhile, back up the road at the build site, Ship 31 was lifted off of the back of the left work stand in Mega Bay 2. The Starship was then transferred to an awaiting transport stand and secured. Several hours later, the rocket was rolled out of the building and through the ring yard. The presumed Flight 6 second stage was then taken into High Bay. As the ship arrived in High Bay, a storm rolled through the area, drenching the site and shaking the cameras. Once the storm had passed, Ship 31 was again rolled out into the open. In short order, the vehicle was taken back into High Bay, this time being parked in the front right corner, the same place where Ship 30 recently had its heat shields replaced. That afternoon, back at the launch complex, a crane was seen removing sections of cryogenic piping and accessories. These assemblies are likely being scrapped as part of the process of switching over from the old vertical to the new horizontal storage tanks. And just a few hours later, crews were seen up at the starboard chopstick to install another new damper as they continue to work to prepare the arms for catching. Unfortunately though, there seemed to be an issue and the lift was aborted. Just minutes later however, the damper was again lifted and this time installed. Meanwhile, over at the Massey outpost, SpaceX began loading propellants into Ship 30 as it began its latest round of testing. This Flight 5 Starship already underwent an initial static fire test at the launch site before the test stands were dismantled, but later had an engine replaced. Just after 5.30 p.m. on Friday, Ship 30 performed the second static fire at the Massey outpost. The test appeared to be a success and brought us one step closer to the next flight test. That night, Ship 33's forward dome section was rolled out of the Star Factory building and staged outside of Mega Bay 2. SpaceX continues to push onward with stacking operations of the first of the Block 2 Starships. In the early morning hours of Saturday morning, Test Tank 16 departed the Massey outpost as it rolled onto Highway 4 on its way back to the build site. The test article underwent some cryogenic testing in the new structural test stand, but no specific structural tests were witnessed during its time at Massey's. At the end of the lengthy rollback, the tank was taken into the Star Factory building. A little while later, Ship 33's forward dome section, notably constructed with a flatter E-dome, was picked up by a crane and taken into Mega Bay 2. Once inside, the crane took the section over toward the turntable in the front right corner of the building. Meanwhile, down at the launch complex, crews continued to work on the dampers on the starboard arm of the chopsticks. Over at the Future Orbital Pad 2, crews were busy installing sheet piles, likely as part of the construction of the expected flame trench at the new pad. Back over at Orbital Pad 1, crews continued to fight with the latest new damper, seeming to struggle to get it properly installed. Back up the road at the build site, a ship transport stand was moved out of the Sanchez site and brought over to the build site. That afternoon, crews began painting some of the steelwork on the new office building. Following SpaceX's usual color scheme, they used white paint. Meanwhile, back at the chopsticks, crews continued to struggle with one of the dampers on the starboard arm. Eventually, however, they secured the equipment in place and it was disconnected from the crane. Around that same time, Ship 30 began its return journey from the Massey outpost following its successful static fire. Over the next two hours or so, the vehicles rolled up Highway 4 and into the ring yard gate at the build site. Back at the chopsticks, crews were still moving on as the crane lifted the next damper up and crews went up in lifts to meet it. Shortly after it arrived back at the build site, Ship 30 was then moved out of the ring yard and placed just inside of the doorway of Mega Bay 2. 
Then, late that night, the Flight 5 Starship was lifted off of the static fire stand. The stand was then rolled out of the building and replaced with a normal ship transport stand. At that point, the ship was lowered onto it and secured. With its job done for the time being, the static fire stand was rolled out of the build site and returned to the Sanchez site for storage. And just a few hours later, Ship 30 now secured to the transport stand followed in the footsteps of the static fire stand. The vehicle was taken to the Sanchez site and parked across from the rocket garden near where the old engine installation stand used to be. On Sunday evening, Ship 30's flaps were reopened as crews worked to prepare the vehicle for a launch, hopefully in August. On Monday morning, crews were back at work once again on the chopsticks. This time, a new damper was being installed near the end of the port side arm. About an hour later, the Flight 5 hot stage ring emerged from the Star Factory for the first time. The ring was then moved through the ring yard and relatively quickly into Mega Bay 1. That afternoon, crews began installing the glass facade across the second floor of the new office building. Over at Mega Bay 2, some new components were seen being taken inside of the building. It wasn't immediately clear exactly what they were, possibly parts for the continued build out of the building's work stands and access platforms. That evening, the now empty Starlink dispenser installation jig was lifted out of the work stand inside of Mega Bay 2. The stand was then taken out of the building and back to the Star Factory. Tuesday morning, Booster 15's forward dome section was brought out of the Star Factory building and staged outside of Mega Bay. This move indicates that SpaceX is moving on to the stacking of the booster's methane tank now that the liquid oxygen tank is fully stacked. Also on Tuesday, the Glaziers continued installing the windows across the front of the office building. Meanwhile, further down the face of the building, another crew continued to paint the steel that will be exposed behind this glass facade. Down the road at the launch site, the tower module load spreader was disconnected from the top of the now secure fourth module. Crews disconnected it by unbolting the tower lifting eyes from the top of the columns, leaving them attached to the spreader for use on the next module. A few hours later, the Saren's crane lowered its auxiliary hook and picked up a section of elevator mast. The crane would lift the section and crews would attach another piece to the bottom. This process was repeated until a tall enough section of mast was attached. Late that night, the next module of the new tower was rolled out of the Sanchez site. This sixth module is notably more sparse looking than the previous ones due to the fact that it's above the ship quick disconnect arm and associated piping. Once arriving at the launch complex, the module was parked next to the already awaiting fifth module. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, a ship stand was rolled into the ring yard. The door on Mega Bay 2 was then opened and the stand moved inside. Once inside, one of the bridge crane hooks was lowered and straps were connected to the stand. Before lifting the stand, however, the hook was lowered and the straps removed and the stand taken out of the build site. A short time later, Booster 15's forward dome section was moved out of the staging area and into Mega Bay 2 in preparation for stacking. At the same time, a ring stand arrived in the ring yard and was taken into Mega Bay 2. This stand was then connected to one of the building bridge cranes and lifted briefly before being set back down and disconnected. As the Thursday sun rose over Starbase, the Saren's crane lifted the previously assembled section of elevator truss and installed it inside of the stacked fourth module of the new launch tower. Back at the build site, the ring stand was shifted off to the right-hand side of Mega Bay 2. After that move, the building's partially open door was raised to the fully open position. Meanwhile, as the Saren's crane continued to work with its auxiliary hook, module number 5 began moving across the site to the staging area next to the tower. A short time later, the crane lowered its main hook and picked up the tower module load spreader with attached eyelets as it shifted in preparation for the next lift. Once the spreader was up, module 5 was maneuvered underneath and crews headed up to the top of the columns to begin bolting them together. Another day at Starbase meant another day of work for the window installation crew over at the office site. Work is progressing at a steady pace with more than half of the first side of the second floor now covered in glass. Wednesday also brought more activity at the tank farm. 
Additional piping was seen being removed as SpaceX continues with the reconfiguration of this part of Stage Zero. A new motor for a cryogenic pump was spotted being delivered on a covered flatbed trailer. The motor was offloaded near the methane pumps. In the rocket garden, several man lifts and a crane were spotted working on the B-14.1 test tank. It's possible that they're preparing the article for additional simulated catch tests once crews finish working on the chopsticks. Nearby, the Booster 15 forward dome section was rolled back out of Mega Bay. It's not yet clear if this was an issue or if the article had just been taken inside for some kind of fit checks. Back down the road at the tank farm, a crane was used to remove a motor from one of the methane pumps. Once that pump was out of the way, the crane hooked up to the new motor and lifted it into the farm as a replacement. About an hour later, back at the build site, a security boat was spotted arriving at the main ring yard gate. SpaceX uses this boat and others like it to patrol the restricted area offshore during launches. That night, Booster 15's forward dome section was once again rolled out of the staging area and into Mega Bay 1. If there was an issue earlier, it apparently has now been resolved. Just a few hours later, the next section of Booster 15's methane tank followed the forward dome section into the building for stacking. Shortly after dawn on Thursday, module number five of the new launch tower was lifted off of the assembly and transport jig by the Sarens crane. The section was slowly raised, maneuvered into position, and lowered down to the top of module four. This lift brings the tower up to a height that includes the ship quick disconnect arm. Work continued Thursday on the facade of the new office building. Crews pushed forward with the window installation while the painting crew appeared to finish painting all the steel that will be exposed just behind the glass on this second level. Over at the tank farm, a small vertical tank was removed from the area behind where scrapped vertical cryogenic storage tanks used to sit. Back up the road at the office site, the window crew finished up the first wall of the building and continued on to the next face. By the end of the day, the installers had already finished a good chunk of this newest stretch of windows. Meanwhile, back at the tank farm, the previously removed vertical tank was installed in a new location. It seems it will now live at the front of the farm, just inside the old D2 gate where the new piles were drilled recently. A short time later, an SPMT with a pair of tank cradles was spotted moving up Highway 4 away from the launch complex. This SPMT was likely used for the earlier relocation of the vertical tank. A concrete pump truck was spotted Thursday afternoon working near the orbital launch tower. From the position, it seems likely that the concrete was going into the pit being built in line with the expected commodity trench to the new tower. Back at the build site, a shipping container office was spotted seemingly coming out of the Star Factory. This could be an indication that the inside of the building is approaching completion and nearing readiness for normal operations. A few hours later, Module 6 began rolling towards the new launch tower. The module was moved past the normal staging area and parked behind the tower from Nurdle's point of view. It's expected that after this next lift, the Saren's crane will need to be reconfigured before the rest of the tower can be stacked. Switching over to Florida, on Friday morning, SpaceX rolled a Falcon 9 out to the pad at Launch Complex 39A. That afternoon, the rocket and its load of satellites were raised vertical ahead of launch of the Starlink Group 10-9 mission. In the early hours of Saturday morning, the rocket lit up the Florida skies as it lofted 23 Starlink satellites on their way to orbit. Notably, this mission marked the return to flight for the Falcon 9 fleet following the anomaly just over two weeks prior. Later on Saturday, over at Space Launch Complex 41, ULA rolled an Atlas V rocket out of their vertical integration facility. The rocket in a 5-5-1 configuration with five solid rocket boosters was then moved to the launch pad ahead of the USS F-51 mission for the US Space Force. Just after 1 o'clock Sunday morning, the second Starlink launch of the weekend lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. SpaceX was anxious to start making up for the time lost during the two-week pause in their Falcon 9 schedule. On Monday morning, Go Cosmos returned to port with the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 10-9 mission. This ship is filling in while Bob and Doug take turns in dry dock for maintenance. 
Late that afternoon, Just Read the Instructions was towed into Port Canaveral with Falcon 9 Booster 1069 from that same launch. Around five hours later, Bob kept up the maritime activity as it returned after successfully recovering both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 10-4 mission. Just before 7 o'clock Tuesday morning, ULA's Atlas V rocket blasted off from Space Launch Complex 41 for the USS F-51 mission. Just after the launch, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back into port with Booster 1077 from Sunday's Starlink launch. A few hours later, Booster 1077 was lifted off of the deck of a short fall of Gravitas and placed onto the dockside stand. This booster offloading first seems to indicate that SpaceX preferred to get their newer drone ship back out quickly for the next launch. That afternoon, after just 10 hours in port, as expected, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back out to sea for its next mission. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, Go Cosmos followed the drone ship out to sea for fairing recovery operations for the Starlink Group 10-6 mission. A few hours later, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 had finished its dockside processing and was transferred to an awaiting transporter for its return to Roberts Road. On Thursday, with 1077 now out of the way, Booster 1069 was finally lifted off the deck of Just Read the Instructions and moved to the dockside stand. On Thursday afternoon, SpaceX was preparing for yet another Falcon 9 launch. Booster 1078 and its payload were spotted being rolled out of the horizontal integration facility in preparation for the next Starlink launch. Over at the port, Blue Origin's new Glenn first stage Pathfinder was rolled to the dock. This article was rolled over to the breakover fixture. It appears that Blue is preparing to test this fixture, which will be used to lay the rockets down after they return to the port on the landing barge. Later that afternoon, SpaceX raised the Starlink Group 10-6 rocket into the vertical position in preparation for a launch window that opened shortly after midnight. Around that same time, fairing recovery vessel Bob headed back out to sea once again, this time in support of the upcoming Cygnus cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.